So good morning, my name is Nadia. And in this session, I will try to address some common questions concerning the administration and reporting of the Euroflow QA tests. When you first come to our uh, QA website before you register for Euroflow QA, you will see a basic overview of the program and the individual QA schemes. Currently, we offer schemes for the LST, MMMRD, PyDoc, and DCPL MRD QA. Three of the current schemes contain a wet lab part, and people are often concerned about how the samples are going to be distributed. Uh, however, our tests are performed using a locally drawn healthy donor blood sample, uh, so we can avoid the hassle of sending the fixed samples all over the world. Another question that arises after reading the introduction is, can we participate in Euroflow QA even when we are not part of the consortium? And the answer is yes, definitely. <clears throat> Partly related to this is the question whether it makes sense to participate even if the lab doesn't strictly follow the Euroflow protocols. Uh, this depends on what you expect as a result of the test. If you are interested in how your protocol compares to the Euroflow protocol, then probably yes. Concerning uh, the analytical software, uh, it is not necessary to use um, uh, to use um, Infinisit. Um, the only limitation is that in the LST test, you won't be able, we won't be able to merge your analyzed files with files from the other participants. And therefore you will not get the graph showing your analyzed values in comparison to others. Uh, you will just know whether your reported numbers are within the acceptable range using the P-score metrics as Tomáš explained yesterday. Uh, for BCP ALL MRD test, you will have to use some analytical software which is capable of merging two files, your healthy donor FCS file and the provided patient FCS file. When you scroll down the introductory page, you can see the costs and the schedule for the particular year. And if you get interested, you can register. The registration doesn't oblige you to anything, no payment is involved. You will just get the access to more specific information. By clicking this link, you will get to the new user's registration form. <clears throat> when registered, you log in to your homepage here. Uh, if you forget your password, you use the forgot password link. If you forget even your login name, um, you have to write to me. Please mention your lab code so that I can find your lab easily. If you do not know anything, then write to me, but please give me at least some details according to which I can find your lab. This can be your country and city, institution, contact person name, or invoice contact person name. Uh, when you log in, the top of your homepage looks like this. It is like a crossroads where you can use the links um, to get to the tasks you need. You can download a, a PDF describing the programs for the particular year. You can read the instructions for the individual uh, QA schemes. And when you decide you want to sign up for a particular round of your interest, you click on the sign up for a QA round link. Uh, when you click on it, it will take you to a page uh, where you can mark uh, the round of your choice. LSTQA is the only scheme which allows more than one report for an additional fee of 90 euros. Uh, uh, you can see the rounds which you have signed up for here at the top of the sign-up page and also at the top of your home page. Uh, sometimes people demand that I sign them up, but this is not possible. You have to do it yourself. It is necessary to sign up in time to get the invoice and also to get the related correspondence from us. Uh, when you go to manage my account link, uh, you will get to the same form uh, that you have filled during your First registration, you can change any details here. If you want to get uh, the correspondence on more email addresses, you can add them here <clears throat> in the certificate contact email field separated by comma. If you want us to quote your purchase order number on the invoice, you can fill it here in your reference field. Marika Bitter, who takes care of our finances, suggests that you check with your financial department whether a specific route needs to be followed 
to submit the invoice. Uh, when you sign up for QA round, Marike sends an invoice for the payment. Um, this is how the invoice uh, is going to look like next year. Uh, Marike uh, sends the invoices at the end of the sign-up period for the two rounds, uh, which is usually the beginning of March for the laboratories who sign up for the first or both rounds, and the beginning of September for the ones who sign up for the second round only. When you receive the invoice, you have to pay for the QA, otherwise you won't be able to access your certificate of performance. Uh, so now that you have signed up for QA round, the payment process has started and your account details are up to date, you have to actually perform the test. On your homepage, you will find these four tabs for the individual tests. This slide shows how MMMRD page looks like as an example. Um, Please uh, read the instructions uh, on the web and download the detailed instruction uh, PDF, which we update for each round. Uh, download the FCS file if the test contains the dry analysis. If you experience difficulties performing the test, uh, you can use the links uh, to publications which uh, provide the background for the QA test. Uh, in case of MMMRD QA, you can make use of the MMMRD files from the past rounds for more practice. We put these um, uh, uh, on the web at the end of each year together with the related information and reference values. You are also invited, of course, to attend the educational meeting and uh, you can ask uh, the scientists responsible for the particular QA scheme. Uh, to report your results, you select the report uh, QA results link and you will get to this page. So here are some do's and don'ts. Uh, do not skip parts of the test. Fill all required reports, wet part as well as dry part and for all files. Fill all required yellow marked fields with reasonable values. Take care to have the orders of magnitude correct. Check carefully what is supposed to be filled in, for example, medians or means, percentage of what, from which population. After the report is filled, you can print it and check it. If anything is wrong, don't panic, you can update it. Uh, now I describe some common uh, problems in LST uh, reporting. <clears throat> In order to produce it files, which we can merge with files from other participants, it is important to use the correct profile here, here in red, which is provided in the LSTQA instructions. These are the examples of incorrect profiles containing additional gates uh, with missing or repositioned debris gate or uh, renamed monocyte uh, populations. Also, please do not merge several FCS file in, files into one SID file. When filling in the uh, numbers into the report form, uh, be aware that InfiniSID uses decimal point to separate the whole numbers, and DIVA uses comma to separate thousands. So while uh, this is 163 in InfiniSID, uh, this is 27,300. 29 in DIVA. Uh, often we find that you report means instead of medians because they are as a default uh, there. Um, it is not uh, necessary to enter the rainbow beads and regions used in the LST test, uh, but it makes it easier for us to notice the problem where the problem might be. When uploading the SID files, drag them here and click Start Upload. This might take several minutes. Um, when the upload of all three files is finished, uh, which you should see here in the status window and size window, click save and continue. Uh, do not upload FCS files or any other types of files except SID files. Um, after saving, you can print the filled form and check the numbers and files. If you find an error, you can go back and update the form. 
and you can control which files we will use uh, for the analysis by marking them in this include in the analysis field. If uh, the upload process doesn't seem to work properly, do not try it over and over because most likely it will get overstuffed. Write to me instead. We are trying to improve the upload process uh, as it seems to be the most error prone part of it. When you have analyzed your results and uh, when we have analyzed your results and your certificates of performance are ready, you can use the link from your homepage and download them. Uh, the most frequent question I get is, why can't we see our certificate? Uh, the answer usually is that the payment uh, for the QA has not been received on our account. It is possible uh, that for some reason the payment has not been made by your institution. That is the most common reason. Uh, maybe you have not received an invoice. If you do not receive the invoice shortly after the end of the sign-up period, it is better to ask. It is also always possible that we have made a mistake and haven't noticed your payment and some other problems with the payment might happen. Uh, if you need more information concerning this, uh, please contact Maike at uh, this address. If you contact me, I can just forward your message to her. Some other reasons for not seeing your certificate include that you have not reported your results or we have made some other mistake. Um, in that case, please write to me. Uh, here are some questions related to the inherent problems of online communication, such as the confirmatory emails not coming, uncertainty of what you have actually signed up for, uh, what results you have submitted, where you have saved your certificate or your account details. We believe that the solution to this communication noise is the top of your homepage. Here you can see the QA rounds you have signed up for, the reports you have sent us. You can also use uh, these uh, links and change these as long as the schedule permits it. You can download your certificates from the current and the past year, and you can manage your account from here. So the information you see here is the information we have and we work with. Uh, my last topic is the schedule. Here is the preliminary schedule for the next year. Uh, you can find it at the bottom of the page before you log in or at the bottom of your homepage. Uh, you can see that there are two relatively long periods allowing you to sign up for the spring and autumn QA rounds. At the end of these periods, uh, the sign up option is closed and the invoices are distributed. Uh, next, there is a period for reporting your LST and MMMRD QA results. After the reporting deadline, your results are analyzed and certificates are made. While we analyze these results, you report your BCP, AL, MRD, and PI.QA. These are again analyzed and certificates are made. After releasing the BCP, AL, MRD, and PI. certificates, the round is finished. When the web page doesn't allow you to sign up for a round or to report your results, it is most likely not the right time, uh, so check the schedule. Uh, another set of questions sounds like our machine has broken or we do not have the right samples right now or we have too much work or we forgot. Can we submit the results after the deadline? Uh, the answer to this is unfortunately it is not possible. We try to schedule at least four weeks during which you can report your results. Uh, the analysis is time consuming and we cannot do it one by one. Uh, we compare the results among the participants in the particular round, so we have to start in time so that we can finish in time for everybody. So please plan ahead and start rather earlier in order to have enough time if any difficulties arise. Or another strategy could be to mark the deadline in your calendar one week before the actual deadline. So I hope this was at least a bit helpful and I'm looking forward to your results in the next QA. Thank you for your attention.